Turn your normal column chart into this one over here, which shows extra information in bubbles above each column. Now in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set it up. Now this chart is especially nice if you want to put a lot of focus on that extra information. And the columns themselves, they could provide more context, for example, for the magnitude of total sales. All right, now we're going to start off with a native visual, which is going to be the combo chart. So the line and cluster column chart. Now here I want to visualize the total sales. So that one is going to go on the y-axis. And then on the x-axis, I want to have a breakdown by the sales segment. And let's do a quick cleanup. So here from formatting, I'm going to get rid of the axis titles. Then let's remove the y-axis values and the grid lines. Let's bring in the data labels and a little bit of padding and let's round those corners. And of course we have to update the title and let's increase the space a bit between the columns. All right, so now the real work can start. We have to create bubbles above each column in one line. Now that we're going to do with another series. Now for that, I created a new measure, which is going to be my bubble position measure. Now this measure just goes row by row over the different sales segments. Then for each segment calculates the total sales and then of those values returns the maximum. So in our case, that would be 48.8 and that value then gets multiplied by 1.7. Just an arbitrary number to create a little bit of extra space above the highest data point. Now that's the measure that we are going to use on the line Y axis. So let's drag and drop it over here. And it gives us a straight line. However, not in the position that I was hoping for because this line should be above that 48.8. How come? Well, having that measure on the line Y axis creates a secondary axis on the right hand side. And this one is out of sync with the primary axis. Well, that is currently not visible. So how to fix that? Well, for that, we need to sync the two axes. And for that, we need another measure. Let me show you. And this measure is almost the same as the previous one. The only difference is that we take the max value and multiply it by 2.2, just another arbitrary value that's a little bit higher to have enough space above our columns. All right. So now let's go back to the formatting options for a chart. And then here for the Y axis range, we want to set the maximum using that measure. So let's look for max. There it is. And we're going to do exactly the same thing for the secondary Y axis. Also there, I want to set the maximum using that measure. And still it's not fixed. And that is because, well, the secondary axis has a different starting point. So we can, first of all, click here on align zeros. Now that already looks better. Now we could also have a measure that determines the starting point or for this chart, it also works to just fix the starting point at zero for both the primary and secondary Y axis. Okay, so now we have a straight line that shows always above the columns. However, I don't wanna show that legend. I don't wanna show the values on that secondary Y axis. And I also wanna get rid of the data label. So let's do that quickly, legend of secondary Y axis. Here the, well, everything looks turned off. However, values, if I turn them on and off again, huh, that fixes it, all right? And if we then go to data labels, there I do not want to have data labels for the bubble position. Now clearly, these are not bubbles yet. So how do we turn that line into bubbles? Well, for that we can use the markers. So I'm going to go here to markers and then we can turn them on. And of course we want to have them a little bit bigger. So let's increase them all the way to the maximum, which is oh, 20. Now, actually I would like to make them a little bit bigger. I'll show you a trick how to achieve that a little bit later. All right, so for now, this is the maximum. And then we can go here to lines and we can just simply turn all of the lines off. So now we have bubbles in one line above each column. Short interruption, if you feel you got some value from this video so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really supports the channel and it makes sure that you become a better Power BI developer. Now, let's go back to the video. Now, maybe instead of having them pink, let's make them light gray. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the markers and then here you see we have also color and I'm gonna go for a gray color. Now, if you think, ah, it would be nice to have a border. Well, here we have the border formatting options. Click on on and it automatically turns off 
Again, a little bug in Power BI. All right, now let's move on. So now I want to show values on these bubbles. Now for that, we have the data label. So let's go there. And then here for the bubble position, I can turn them on. But what will happen is that the data labels will show above the markers. And that's not what I want. I want to have the labels on it. Now, then here you find an options, the positioning, right? So if you click on it, we have above and we have under, but there's no center. Now it would be very helpful in this case to have had an option to center the labels on the marker instead of above or under. All right, but it's not there. So we have to look for a workaround. Now we can create a second series right below it. And then we can show those labels for that series on the bubbles. All right, now let me show you what I mean. Now these ones for the moment, I'm going to turn off. And then here in my fields pane, now here you see I've created another measure, bubble label. And yes, it's almost the same as the previous two measures that I showed you. The only difference is here the adjustment factor, which in this case is a little bit lower, 1.55, because I want to create a line below the bubbles that you're currently looking at. All right, so let's put this one also onto our chart, right below bubble position on the line Y axis. All right, perfect. We have now another set of markers showing up above each column. Now, I don't want to show the markers for this series, also not the line, just the labels. All right, so I'm going to go here to formatting and then markers. And for this new series, which is then bubble label, I do not want to show the markers. Now then for data labels, I want to have them turned on for the bubble label. So let's do that. And now we see the same value popping up on each bubble. Now, I don't want to show that same value, which is the bubble label value, which is just for the positioning. The value that I want to show is going to be, let's say, total sales year over year growth rate or any percentage or any value that you want to display on these bubbles. So total sales year over year. Now let's also then make it a little bit smaller and we don't really need that background. Now don't be too concerned yet with the perfect positioning of these values on the bubbles. That's for the end. All right, so this is good enough. Now, maybe you also want to apply a little bit of conditional formatting to the color of the font. Well, you see here we have an FX button, so we can click on it, then go over here to field value, and then you can create a measure that applies the conditional formatting. Now, I will show you this measure in a second. So bubble label conditional formatting. You see now some of the labels are showing in red or green. Now, to make it a little bit more readable, I'm just going to make it also bold. And now let's go to that conditional formatting measure. And it just checks if the total sales year over year is above 3%, positive or minus. All right, now you see we are very close already. It doesn't look amazing just yet. So let's put some finishing touches to it. I want to, first of all, connect the dots to the columns. So kind of like a candlestick chart. So the way that we can do that is with arrow bars. So back to formatting options, arrow bars, and then here for the series total sales that visualizes the columns. I want to have a line that goes from here to the bubble position. So let's enable the arrow bars and put the upper bound to bubble position. And that's basically it. Now, just to make it look better, let's make it a little bit lighter. And so the bar is going to be light gray. Then the border size I put to zero so that we don't have a border. And then I also think it's now a little bit distracting to have the labels for the columns above the column. So I'm gonna go back to data labels, select here the total sales series. And then here we can change the position to inside and. All right, and then we just update the font color to white, make it a little bit smaller, get rid of the background. All right, now you see, this looks pretty nice. However, it's not perfect just yet. And one of the main reasons is that the numbers, they get out of the bubbles. They are a little bit too big. So the bubbles should be bigger or the numbers should be smaller. Now, of course, we could get rid of one decimal place, which would be an easy fix. However, let's not go for the easy fix. Let's see if we can make these bubbles bigger. Now, you might think, ah, if we just go to markers and then select the bubble position, and then here we just increase the size to, let's say, 30. <laughs> mm, no, that, that's not going to work. We cannot increase the size further 
than 20 pixels. It's just like a random cutoff point that they chose. Don't ask me why. It's really annoying for this case. But there's a workaround. Let me show you. What you can do is to do a little trick using the theme of the Power BI file. So if you go here to view, you see we have different themes that you can choose from. Now for this report, I have a standard theme, all right? Accessible Orchid, that is this one over there. Now, what you can do is save that theme. So let's save it. Now you can open that theme file in any text editor. However, I prefer one like Visual Studio Code because there you can just right click and nicely format it. All right, so once you have done that, there we have to define the formatting for the markers of a combo line chart, right? The one that we are using in our Power BI report. So I'm going to add a comma over here at the end. You see above it is just the colors of that theme, etc. Now here I already prepared the code that we need. And you see what this one does. It defines the visual styles for, well, in this case, the line cluster column combo chart. All right. And what do we want to have? We want to show the markers in circles and the marker size should be Oh, here's the trick. Not 20, but 35. Here we can set any size we like. Now, once you have this, let me just get rid of that comma over there. Now we can save that theme. I will include the theme file in the download link that you find in the description. All right, now, once you have that theme file, you can go back to your Power BI report, and then here we have to import it. So back to view, theme, and then browse for themes. Select your theme, and if there's no mistake, then it should nicely update. Now, you see, it was added successfully, but nothing changed because I already changed the markers. And once you start to make changes, it doesn't override those changes for those elements that you already touched. So let's go back to our markers. And then here we have the bubble position, bubble label. We want to have bubble position, all right? And we can reset the markers. So let's see what happens. Now, the good news is that the markers are clearly bigger. However, well, all of the markers popped up again, and I want to also have a different color. Now, something that we could set up over the theme. However, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So let's just do it from here for now. All right, so for the bubble label, I don't want to have the markers. And then for the bubble position, there I wanted to have a different color. So I'm gonna go back to the gray I had before. And ta-da, you see the trick worked. We have now our circles a little bit bigger than the 20 pixels, which is the maximum that you can choose from the formatting pane. All right, now I think though that it's not really clear what the percentages show, all right? So maybe we can add that to the title and what is also missing is a little bit of that overall number. Uh, so for select period, the select the quarter, what is the total sales value and the total growth rate. So I'm going to use the title and subtitle for that. So let's go over here, back to the title formatting options. And then here we can add something like quarterly sales by segment or sales by segment quarter over quarter. Okay, something like this. Now, then for the subtitle, I would like to show the values. So I'm gonna go here, subtitle. Let's get rid of that standard text, but instead we can make it dynamic, all right? So here you see we have conditional formatting and I already set up over here the measure total income subtitle. Now let's see how that looks like. Already pretty good. However, I would put more focus on the number, less focus on that main title. So let's make this bold and let's also choose the same color as we have the columns. So I'm gonna go here for that darker blue and then we can make the number also a little bit bigger, all right? And then the main title, we could actually make a bit smaller, relatively. And that's it. Now, here in the bottom left corner, I already set up a slicer. I'm just going to put it a little bit closer. All right, let's see what happens when I change from Q4 to a different quarter, like Q2. You see, everything nicely updates, perfect. So in this case, you see for the sales segment mid, we have the largest drop quarter over quarter and it is actually one of the bigger segments. All right, so it puts a lot of focus on that growth rate, but puts it also straight away into perspective. How important is it? What is the size of that category? In this case, the sales segment. All right, now let me know your thoughts about this chart. Put it in the comment section below. Now, if you want to build reports together with me from beginning to end, learn all of my tips and tricks to check out my upcoming design transformation program over here. 
Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.